Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo. It's a hot day today, so I'm not going to be outside a whole lot. But this afternoon, I decided I'm going to put in a, a weather station, basically a pole with a rain gauge and a thermometer. But I'm going to beautify it too. I've got a, I've got some ideas to make this a really a place of joy for me. So let's go take a look. My wife's grandfather-in-law. Um, lived in Garden, Arkansas, and he and his garden and his backyard, uh, he was kind of an outdoorsy fella. He had a, had a nice, big, huge garden. But uh, we received a lot of, um, of gifts from, from them. They were very generous, and they gave us a garden bell. Now, it's just an ornamental bell. It rings. It's pretty loud. You can put it up for a dinner bell or something, but I just always wanted to have a bell in my garden, you know, for those days when the kids are outside and the uh, my son could come by and just ring that bell as he walks by and just for the fun of having a, a beautiful uh, place in the yard that's uh, not, not really useful in terms of production but will be a place where I can put my weather station and some cast iron hooks to hang some lanterns on just a place of beauty so that's what I'm doing today Show you what I'm up against here. This is hard clay. This is a coax cable. Hope that's not my cable line. Actually, that used to run to a satellite dish. But uh, yeah, I'm about a foot deep and I'm in this really hard, hard clay here. That is black gumbo clay. That is not gonna come out easily. And I've gotta get another foot deep here. But uh, once you get a foot deep, man, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid stuff. You can see the strata I've got maybe I don't know what is that four inches of topsoil that is easily breakable and then you get into this clay right here and that clay it's like a rock so cutting through this clay is always the challenge in this area you've got to dig a fence hole man that's rough Whew. once I got through that clay layer it wasn't so hard in a suburb in my region, they come through <clears throat> ever since about the 80s or 90s. They started thinking, wow, streets make a good channel for floodwaters. Well, we get lots of flooding here. So what they do is they'll dig out the street and they'll put the streets below grade and they'll take all that material, that clay and that, that soil, and they'll throw that up where the houses are gonna go and they'll build rivers, basically. The streets are actually an integral part of the sewage system, the runoff system here. And all that clay they threw up on our pads here where our houses and backyards are. It's about three or four feet deep. Sometimes it's, right here it's I guess about two feet deep. Once you break through that top layer of black gumbo clay, you get down into the original topsoil and it's not so bad. You can dig that pretty easily, but it's getting through that, wow man, it's getting through that clay though. That's work. Once you get through it, you got another foot of topsoil and then you get into the clay again. Now we're gonna water it in, let that sand settle down a bit and level it out and then we'll pack some more sand on top. So this sand helped to secure this in place. And as it rains, it might settle a little bit so I'll just add some more sand to it. This ensures that I can come and pull this post out of here if I really want to, uh, but it secures it enough for the purposes we're going for. I'm not building a fence, I'm not building a structure, I'm not building something that, uh, you know, the code pirates got to come and approve. It's just a pole, and so uh, for what I'm going to put on this pole, we're good. <laughs> I 
I've found that in this treated lumber you should always pre-drill with a drill bit appropriate to the wood screw you're going to use. Uh, just about the size of the actual uh, shank of the, of the, the screw. Um, or a little bit smaller. This is uh, treated lumber. It's really tough. It's uh, really got knots in it and so you want to drill out or you'll strip your screw and you'll end up having to back one out like I just had to do. All right, now I need a string for my bell. I've got this twine, this uh, hemp garden twine. It's real thin stuff. It's not going to do. I'll show you how to make a more substantial rope with this stuff. Basically, you get about a six foot long piece of twine, you tie it together so that it's closed, and you make a loop, a little hook or something, to go in your drill. And you just put one end through your drill on that hook, like so, so that it twists. And then you put the other end on a hook. Well, I just put in some hooks. Then, draw it out taut. twist. You, you can feel it drawing you forward as it as it twists up and that's what you want. You want that tension in there. And then don't let it touch. Keep it taut and bring it together both ends. And then these ends will naturally want to snap together. You can do it that way or you can do it a little more controlled. And what you get is the tension of this rope wants to wrap and cord around itself. And you've got yourself a piece of rope. So what you're left with is literally a piece of rope. Now you can do this several times over and get multi-stranded rope by com continuing to twist, but that's how they make rope. And now I have a little bit more substantial piece of cordage to tie on my bell. I'm just going to tie a little knot here in the end to keep it from going through the hole on that clanger. So my rain gauge is one of these removable types. So I can just slide it off there and empty it out. And it's gra graduated in inches and metric. So I can sit it up there and it can catch the rain and tell me how much rain we've had. It's always nice to know, you know, the news guy says, oh, we got two inches today. Well, now I can really come out and see, did we get two inches today right here on my climate? I uh, bought these hooks, these cast iron hooks, uh, just on Amazon. And uh, those let me hang my, uh, my lanterns there. I really like lanterns. There we go. That makes me real happy. I love lanterns. I collect old lanterns or I have a collection I don't actively collect them but some of these old lanterns I can set the light at night and just come out and enjoy the warm glow in the garden at night now and tell how hot it is right now it's 90 degrees and when it rains I got my rain catcher on the other side and now I can uh, find out how much it's rained yeah makes me happy Thanks for joining us on Black Gumbo. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <music>